A wonderful good morning here from Vienna, Austria. It's Easter Monday and the Austria lockdown is about to finish tomorrow. A good time for me to talk about water rowing because this is what we will all be up to in the next couple of months. In some countries earlier, in some countries later, but we'll meet each other in the water again. Now, this is Debbie from the US. Debbie is extremely fit master's rower, hasn't rowed too long, and she sent me her footage and she wanted to know what it is that she could do to row faster. Now, you probably have realized that Debbie is rowing with Randall foils and there is a significant effect on her speed. It's just what I think I see. However, there are a couple of flaws very common amongst master's rowers in the single skull and I want to use this opportunity to talk about it. David, let's just watch you row for a while so we, the community, can have a look at your rowing and do some thinking. And I'd love to get your feedback and your comments in the comment section. What do you think? Suggest a couple of exercises for Debbie so she can profit. Alright, as usual, you're my 50 cents. Debbie, I think you're rowing in excellent style. Considering the fact that you haven't rowed a long time, there is a lot of good to talk about. However, as my athletes know, I'm not here to praise, I'm here to give constructive critique. And this is what I'm going to do. First thing, let's look at the symptoms. Symptom number one, and this starts right before the catch. Have you seen this? Come closer to the screen. It's, it's excellent, it's absolutely excellent to look at this. Just watch the back, yeah? this part here, right here where my cursor is. Watch the muscles, watch the tension at pretty unusual parts of the body. See this? Now, you may say, ah, yeah, it's, it looks like Debbie is, is sitting more upright just before the catch. Possible? Do you see the tension here, just below the shoulders and, and middle back section? You see how the back tightens up? You can actually, oh, it tightens up massively. Debbie, could you tell me, just put it in the comment section. Do you usually row a linear erg or do you don't use your erg at all? Because if you row linear erg, this would be quite normal because your body tries to protect itself for consi from consistent overloading. I see this with a lot of people who switch from the regular erg to uh, the boat. Because in a regular erg, this linear pull overloads your back and your spine simply runs the risk of getting in injured and therefore the muscles try to protect the body and it's actually insane if you think about it and then tightens up and if you then transfer your um, linear erg technique into the boat this is one of one of the results i will talk about solutions later on so symptom number one back tightens up quite a bit symptom number two there's there's a late late blade drop which is then abruptly stopped by the Randall foil so you can't go deeper I think with without Randall foils your blade would be pretty deep in the water with Randall foils it's it simply hits its natural limit so this is Randall foils do exactly what their purpose is okay excellent looks very good very good because the Randall foils tell you which height your blade should be at you get into a pretty solid and a very effective drive, that's good. And now there's one more symptom, and it's this one here. See this? Or do you see what's not here? It's the pivot, there's no whip, there's no whoa, extra speed, it just doesn't happen. I must apologize, I think that's a bit too loud, let me turn the volume down, so audio quality will be better from now on. And this whip, or this turbo effect as I call it is simply not there and you see one more symptom number three hands pulled down and blades wash out okay now let's look for reasons for these symptoms and when we talk about symptom number one blades go too deep into the water that's that's a common thing everybody who's been watching my analysis 
knows what's gonna come now and and, and this i know this is debbie just uh, sarcastic here. this water is pretty rough and it's very difficult to row. <laughs> no, just kidding i mean this is like glass this is a mirror this is awesome however it, it's probably a rare thing that you find water that perfect i think the opposite is going to be the norm so you sh your blades should still be off the water quite a lot and i suspect debbie based on your handle position right now and also based on your pulling height because you still manage to bring your blades below the water surface even though there are random foils attached i do think that your gates are too low and this is one of the reasons it's a simple setup you should change um, you should raise the gates my suggestion by one two three washers try out try out with one washer then with two and then maybe a third one that's going to be six millimeters max two two four six millimeters and this allows you to if you go back to the release to the recovery this allows you to have more blade height um, and therefore more a, a better body position because blade height and the way you position your body always correlates now as you move forward right now you have to square your blade but there's no space so what you do is you just push forward and deeper into the boat and this is the wrong tension in the muscle groups here if you push down you cannot really prepare your muscles for pulling it just doesn't work you can't do both i can either pull or push these are contradicting forces so you have to like many 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 other athletes push down in order to have space for the blade to square and then you want to prepare for pulling this takes a lot of time and this is exactly where you see your seat is stopping right now and you, you try to keep the back in position it almost works impossibly actually it almost works however eventually you run out of time and it becomes a bit hectic here and there's the pretty aggressive drive which doesn't have to be the reason why this catch is pretty aggressive is that you already start to drive without the blade being connected in the water what you should do is and that's the solution now with elevated gates you have more space to bring the handles a bit lower into the boat therefore the blades are higher off the water um, desired blade height now if this is a square blade you should have one full square blade plus a half always between the water surface and your shaft this is the goal it, do, it, it's, it doesn't have to be right from release but almost you know, when, once the hands are clear this is you should attain cruising altitude to talk in airplane language and then you go forward and now you have a lot of room to play and that's also important if you have rough water you shouldn't your, your handle should not be too your hands and handles and, and and forearms should not be too connected to your center of, of gravity of, of your body because if you have rough weather and the slightest wave offsets your hands which is natural there's not so much offset of your balance in the boat because you sit with your full body weight on the seat you play around with your hands just move forward this is why i'm looking for loose connection on the way forward now and then as you move forward right there what i'm looking for is a nice pre-tension a bit of the triceps bit in the shoulders you know you shouldn't dislocate your shoulder but just a bit forward um triceps lat lat this is where i'm looking for this here right there not too much just a bit chest bone out stable and then you're ready to pull now whatever i hold on is like display of my laptop if i pull i'm ready if i push forward and then i have to start pulling it, it takes too much time before the muscles get the simply the signal the impulse and then for the muscles to change their state there's not much time here at the catch so if you prepare well on the way forward as your hands go up your blades slowly land then you will have a much better preparation and the idea is that with the last part of the preparation 
the blade is sucked into the water. It's one of the best expressions I've ever heard. It's not like you place the blade in the water. No, no, no. The water slowly sucks the blade in. That's the way to, to approach that. Without your body changing posture, you do this with the last instance of going forward. The blade is finally sucked into the water the moment you change seat direction. So from forward to backward. And as there is not much to do except of doing this, this is done in an instant as the blade is being sucked into the water and the seat changes its direction. Yeah. And then you're in a much better position. There's no tightening up. And generally, I think maybe you should be a bit softer at the catch. Um, Randall foils increase the resistance because there's less slip. A, but that's a good effect. I see you using a backwing rigger, creates a lot of resistance. So maybe it's worthwhile thinking about softening your gearing. Um, you could shorten the outboards a bit. If you watch, if I watch you rowing, yeah, maybe just try it out. Shorten the outboard by a centimeter and, and, and see how it goes. Generally speaking, Debbie, it, it looks very good. It is obvious that you are a very fit athlete. Now, there is one more thing I would like to talk about. Here at the finish, um, you could create much more speed. See, at this point of time, your back is not in a good position. Make sure your pelvis rolls forward. Um, you, you do this on a way forward preparation. So, if we just follow the full drive, release, release, release. Now, don't bend your knees so early. Don't bring the upper section of the trunk forward. Bring the entire trunk forward. The shoulders come forward anyway, they're connected to the hands. But the lower spine, the lower back, supported with your chest bone and your abs, they help you to roll forward and then sit more on the front part of the seat. You shouldn't hang on the front edge of the seat, but more on the front area, surface area of the seat. This is when you know you're actually rolled forward. Because the whip effect during your drive there is only created with the lower section of the, of the back. The upper section follows. You cannot create a whip effect with half the trunk. But this is what you're doing right now. This is where you leave it out completely. So drive, drive, drive. We already talked about this. And that would be an excellent point of time to stay in that position. Just do this here. And I suggest the exercise to do a couple of legs only, legs only, legs, upper body, straight arms or somewhat straight arms. Again, legs only, 10 strokes, 20 strokes, 30 strokes, soft connection, build up, leave the upper body forward, leave the arms straight. Again, to the catch, soft entry, legs only. You know, once our new warehouse is set up, um, I'm, I'm gonna show you a couple of exercises on the bi Um This is much easier to understand then. And when legs only, then you do like 20 strokes, legs, upper body, and then legs, upper body, arms. And I think most athletes overestimate what arms can do at the finish. Not much. Simply follow the paths the inboard handles are going naturally. And then your, you pulling down, that's the last symptom I needed to clarify, um, is the result of your preparation on the way forward. See this? If you have a crash landing with your blade at the catch, you, your blade can't go too deep because you basically support yourself on the Randall foils which prevent the blade from going too deep and prevent your hands from going too high but still at the finish the wash is too much and you can see that if you're able to cover your oars that much with Randall foils your setup is clearly too low so everybody rowing with Randall foils if this is possible your setup is simply too low change it raise the gates with two three washers and this will also make you much faster all right Debbie I hope this helps you Guys, I hope this was interesting for everybody. For me, it certainly was. Send me videos, um, armtrading.com. There's a section, it's called video analysis. And this is where I describe how to send me footage. What I will add though is um, a footage release form. Um, the last video I did with this um, South African student, um, he actually, once the video was all published, he found out that no, the school doesn't want him to do this. And so he had to revoke his permission. And this is something I'm not gonna do any, anymore. This is simply an, an incredible waste of energy and time. 
So therefore, um, I will soon have a footage release form, which make it, makes it clear once I have the footage, once I have your permission, I put it on YouTube and it's gonna stay there forever, period. All right, good guys. That's it, I wish you all the best. And a quick update section will, session will follow. Um, I will post updates on Instagram, um, on IGTV. So if you're not following me on Instagram, it's rm.training. This is where I publish a weekly update. All right, guys, that's it. Take care. Wish you all the best and stay healthy. Bye -bye.